Imagine for a second if hypothetically I told you guys that the 16-inch MacBook Pro of 2021 would bring back MagSafe? What? Wait, <laughs> MagSafe? The, the, but would also bring back legacy ports that they removed way back in 2016. Wait, bringing back with... Not, you mean not USB-C? They're gonna bring back more legacy? And on top of that, keeping the four USB-C ports, but bringing back MagSafe and legacy ports, they are also abandoning the touch bar and going all in on function keys. What? <laughs> there are no, no more touch bars? Yes! Finally! That's probably an accurate viewpoint of your guys' reaction to this report, but yeah. According to Quo and Mark Gurman, sounds like that's what's happening. Let's begin. So yeah, this is a really interesting development I was not expecting to hear this early in the year, but Quo and Mark Gurman from Bloomberg are both kind of confirming that some type of MacBook that's coming out later this year with MagSafe, and Gurman weighed in on it a little bit, saying that it's very similar to previous iterations of MagSafe, because it was probably easy to interpret Quo's as saying that Apple came up with some kind of hybrid like USB-C, but also MagSafe port. It's definitely weird hearing Apple talk talk about MagSafe again for the laptop line because ever since, you know, 2015, 2016, Apple has just been transitioning everything over to USB-C and kind of abandoning MagSafe. And I haven't really minded it because in my opinion, it's much more nice to just be able to charge from each side. But a lot of people definitely loved it. And it almost feels like Apple is just kind of directly listening to a lot of haters' criticisms with the more recent MacBook Pro generations and is now just acting on that saying, hmm, a lot of people don't seem to like the touch bar. A lot of people miss MagSafe and a lot of people want more legacy ports so let's bring it all back and I'm sorry I don't have more information on what those legacy ports will be but I honestly think it's pretty easy to speculate on it because Quo has basically just said that it's equipped with more types of I.O. so that users will not have to use adapters with this next generation MacBook Pro which sounds sacrilegious to Apple at this point it's like oh, you're saying I could buy a new MacBook and not have to get an adapter for it Apple stock plummets to zero because they won't be able to sell USB-C adapters anymore. But legitimately, knowing that with Apple Silicon, Apple probably wants to either make things thinner, and they also touched on that in the report, saying that this is going to be more of a squared off design with the MacBook Pros, and they're going to have, you know, more design symmetry with the iPhone 12 and iPad Pros. But honestly, MacBook Pros are already pretty square, so I'm not exactly sure what he meant by that. Maybe just kind of the bulging under part of MacBook Pros that's a bit more more rounded. Maybe they're ditching that or hopefully the display lid itself is a bit more square so that they can fit some better webcams in there. I don't know, but given the fact that I don't think the next generation MacBook Pros are going to be much thicker than they already are, if they're going with this updated squared off design, they're probably going to be slightly thinner. And if that's the case, I don't see Apple bringing back USB-A, which I really hope they don't, to be honest with you. I know that some people for legacy ports and, you know, using older accessories could really, really use and appreciate USB-A, but I don't want any companies keeping it around because the longer we have it, the more we have people trying to plug something in two ways and I just hate the design of USB-A entirely because it's like symmetrical but not reversible so we waste time and I want Apple to keep pushing USB-C and I don't imagine USB-A fitting very well on the next generation MacBook Pro. So I don't think that's it. There's maybe a chance that they're bringing HDMI back. I mean, that could be somewhat helpful and Apple does still included on devices like the Mac Mini, but they also include USB-A on the Mac Mini. So I don't know if it's going to be HDMI, but my bet, if you guys were asking me like, Drew, what do you think the legacy ports are that they plan on bringing back? My prediction would be the SD card slot, because I feel like there's been a lot of people being fairly outspoken about, you know, working with video or working with cameras in Apple computers, and they always have to default to some kind of USB-C to SD card adapter, because there's not a lot of great wireless alternatives and the SD card slot is very very thin and narrow so if these updated MacBooks are a lot thinner thanks to Apple Silicon of course that's also in this report you know Intel's gonna be gone maybe with Apple Silicon they can redesign the thermal interior of the MacBook and allow to make the whole thing thinner and an SD card slot is something I think a lot of people have asked for and there doesn't seem to be a great you know like well just switch to a USB-C to SD card adapter whereas other accessories out there 
there can have USB-C cables to built in for video output or, you know, four USB-C ports are still, you know, universal serial bus. It's just move on to the new standard, but SD card slot, mm, there's not a great alternative there in my opinion. And maybe Apple was hoping there would be if they removed it, but maybe they just decided, you know what? We can't open airdrop to third parties for some reason. I wish they would though. So we're going to just go ahead and bring back the SD card slot so that photographers and videographers can just go ahead and slide their SD cards right into the MacBook without using an adapter. Total speculation on my part though. I don't know that for sure, but either way, it's very interesting to hear that Apple plans on bringing more I.O. to the next generation MacBooks and at the same time removing the touch bar, which I imagine a lot of us are probably fairly split on. To be honest, I was a big fan of the touch bar. I liked it and I wanted to stick around between having, you know, predictive text when using iMessage or being able to change the volume and the brightness with a slider instead of having to just rapidly press a key. I think it's cool, but I've also talked to a lot of people that hate it and say it freezes on them, which I've literally never had happen once, but some people have had quite a few complaints about the touch bar, so if we lived in a perfect world, I wouldn't mind having, you know, 16-inch MacBook Pro that has function keys for people who want to save on cost, and also a 16-inch MacBook Pro with a touch bar for some people who prefer it, but I guess that for supply chain reasons, that probably doesn't work out, and if Apple decides to get rid of the touch bar, I'll together, yeah, I'll, I'll kind of miss it, and I think we talked about it in a previous video comparing the touch bar to 3D touch of, like, it's a cool feature, a lot of people fall in love with it, but Apple realizes that too many people are not a fan, and it adds a lot of cost to the overall product, so look at the bright side. Maybe you're a big touch bar fan, and you're hearing this, and you're like, wait, no, I want my touch bar to stay. Well, keep in mind that if you're saving up for your next upgrade, and there's no touch bar, there's a decent chance that the starting price could be a lot lower. Now that there's no touch bar, on the 16-inch MacBook Pro, I would say there's a chance maybe it starts at like $2,000 instead of $2,400. You know, in the past, before Apple Silicon, there was, you know, big price differences between the MacBook Air and the 13-inch MacBook Pro, or just function key 13-inch MacBook Pro versus touch bar 13-inch MacBook Pro. Just because of that touch bar, there would be this giant price hike, and I do think that little OLED display adds a lot to the overall cost. So if they're ditching it, might allow Apple to price more competitively. And of course, we're still going to be getting mini LED on these MacBooks. So it'll be a display improvement in that category. But yeah, the other part of this report that's interesting is it's once again referencing a 14-inch MacBook Pro. So this could actually mean a design refresh of like it, the bezels look a bit thinner. And Quo was saying to expect these new MacBook Pros in the third quarter of this year. So got a little bit of waiting to go before we get there. But Mark Gurman said that they are prototyping different MacBooks without touch bars, but not to just completely admit that the next generation won't have it at all. So they're likely still prototyping and experimenting with that kind of thing. So of course, take everything with a grain of salt. No leaker has a perfect track record, but hearing two different leakers talk about the return of MagSafe, the return of legacy ports, talk about a slightly updated and tweaked design, as well as the ditching of the touch bar. You know, if Apple is playing around with it and prototyping it, they must be thinking about removing it, right? It's, it's an interesting concept. And of course, as always, I'm very curious to hear what you guys think. I imagine some some people getting really annoyed by this, some people getting really pumped by this, especially if you've not really been happy with the last four to five years of MacBook Pros. Personally, my main concern is that if we switch back to MagSafe, I'm not going to be able to charge the MacBook from either side. Maybe, you know, with USB-C, you'll still be able to charge, but I'm guessing they're not going to include a MagSafe and USB-C power cable in the box. So you're going to have to pick one or the other and maybe buy a separate USB-C charge brick if you want to charge from the right side or something. But knowing that we could power the MacBook Pro and still have four vacant Thunderbolt 3 ports left over. That I'm kind of excited for, and also the 14-inch MacBook Pro with an updated design. That sounds pretty cool too. So anyway, feel free to let me know your guys' thoughts. This is your Apple Sheep here. I'll see you guys in the next one.